Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I've got a few very solid tips and tricks to up your game in Age of Empires 2. And I'm going to be sharing them with you one at every age. So Dark Age, Feudal, Castle, Imp, and then of course Post Imperial Age. One for every age, it's five tips total and uh, it's going to be hopefully pretty solid. This video is mostly geared towards beginners, but as always from my guide videos, I always make sure to include something that will help even the most experienced viewers. So there's something in here for everyone and I hope you guys are going to enjoy and benefit from this. If you guys want to support me further before I show you guys the tips definitely make sure to check out my patreon link in the description below is by far the best way to go above and beyond and support me in the channel and there's also a lot of cool things that help you guys there like my build orders you can play my community tournaments and I even offer rec review I take a look at your recorded games for the higher tiers so a lot of cool stuff there and it's a way to support me further check it out if you haven't already and let's go ahead and hop right in starting at the dark age all right, listen, the Dark Age is one of the most important ages for Age of Empires 2. It's what sets you up for your game. It's what you do every single game. Every game has a Dark Age. Sometimes if it ends in Feudal Age, you don't get to see Imperial Age, but every game has a Dark Age, as long as we're playing around the map, of course. And my biggest tip for Dark Age, and this really will help improve yourself as a player and help you get more consistent games, and this is to keep your economy efficient and to keep your town center always pumping out villagers. Now, this is a very generic advice, but of course, it's not a hero video if I don't break it down and really explain it to you guys. So what are the ways to keep the economy efficient? Let's put it this way. You need six villagers on sheep always working under the town center to get constant villager production from the town center. That is what you're looking for. However, you don't have infinite sheep and you also don't want to only keep your town center producing villagers. You want to save up to feudal age. So the best way to keep your economy efficient is to hunt all of your sheep, the boar and any deer you bring in directly under the town center. You also want to force drop. So take your villagers, click the town center, then click back to the sheep or the boar to make sure that you get the 50 food needed in the stockpile to continue to pump out villagers. What happens to a lot of players, especially if you're playing a civ like Aztecs that carry more resources on the villagers you guys will have like a lot of food that's sitting on your villas that are collecting boar for example and you still can't afford to make a vill you're missing like 20 food to make a villager and that's only because you didn't take your vills click the town center and click back to the boar and then make a vill so force dropping using your villagers to get the food into your stockpile and continue to make vills to make sure you have no idle time in the town center your town center is always pumping up villagers this is absolutely crucial and a lot of beginners out there completely miss out on this and just the last spicy little tip trick that i use right before before you go ahead and get your first boar, force drop the food from the villagers to the town center. That is the perfect timing. As you're going out to get that boar, force drop, make another vill so you have two vills queued and then focus on the boar alert. That way you don't have to force drop as the boar is coming in. That's how pros do it. That's how a pro can lure a boar and a deer at the same time because they force drop in that window where they're getting the first boar so they don't have to get overwhelmed once the boar is coming in. All right, moving on to Feudal Age. This is a very simple tip and even the strongest players, even like 2K plus on the ladder, don't do this. For some reason, it's out there. I've already talked about it before, but I'll talk about it again. And this is to make a farm as soon as you have 60 wood in the stockpile. It doesn't matter what strategy you're playing. After you make your range and your blacksmith, when you're playing archers, you don't need that much more wood. You need 25 wood for your archer every like 25 seconds, every 30 seconds, however long it takes to make an archer. All your other wood, you want it to become farms. Why? Because you need 800 food for castle age where is that 800 food going to come from it has to come from farms most of the time and so the faster you place the farms the faster you get the 800 food that is how pros always get the castle age a minute faster than a 2k4 for example than a really strong player how do we beat them we get the castle age a minute faster how do we get the castle age a minute faster we know this trick you farm as soon as you have 60 wood and you don't need to make a house or an archer you just make a farm you don't float wood in early feudal age. It is the worst thing you can do and it's gonna guaranteed delay your cast age time. Wood is only a tool to be converted into something else. Think of it, wood alone can't do anything. Wood alone just gets you to be able to do everything. And that is how we go about it for the feudal age. You have 60 wood extra, make a farm. If you wanna have your villagers not sit idle under your town center, you put the villager from your town center in feudal age to a straggler tree, the trees around your town center, let them gather. And then as soon as you have 60 wood, make a farm with him. The next veal comes out, goes to the straggler. Then we have 60 wood, make another farm. Rinse, repeat, perfect efficiency, a much better feudal age for you. All right, moving on to the castle age. The tip I have here is to spend your resources as soon as they come in. This is a very generic tip once again, but I've got some breakdown for it to help you guys understand it better. So usually in early castle age, your main focus is to get the initial tech right away. So you have a stockpile coming into feudal age. You have you know a few hundred resources built up because on the way up to castle age, you're not really doing much. With that stockpile, you usually get some upgrades, bow saw, crossbow, bodkin, maybe start making knights, whatever the case may be. You spend those resources right away. Then your main concern is to continue 
continue to make army in early castleage and make villagers. You might even add one or two extra town centers. Then as you're making more villagers, you're getting more and more resources. The common mistake is that people at this point will just stop expanding. They're just stuck on two or three town centers, stuck on the two stables or the two archer ranges they have. And that's it. No, as you get to 60, 70 vills, you're getting more and more resource flow. You have more and more stockpile. This is when you expand, start making more production buildings, start getting more tech, start getting bills on stone to make castles, add maybe a fourth town center, make more army. Now we're from two stables to six stables. Why? Because we have 80 villagers in late castle. If you do only two stable production, we're going to have 2000 extra food, 2000 extra gold before we even know it. And this is how you go about it. As you build up your vill count, more and more resources come in, spend it. Don't just keep it in the stockpile. It's inefficient. If you have it in your stockpile, it's like you have a Ferrari that you can never drive and you're going to die before you drive the Ferrari. That's what happens. You have a thousand food and a thousand gold and you're going to die before you can spend it in game. That's how it's going to work. So similarly in the early game, how it's really important to make the farm as soon as F60 would in Castle Age, it's really important to spend your resources before it's too late. And eventually once you get to like 90, 100 bills, you start to flow resources, then you can save up and get Imperial Age. You know, that makes sense. But don't just get Imperial Age just because, you know, you don't have nothing else to spend it on. You can always spend it on other things in the mid Castle Age that helps you get control of the map that eventually leads to a more logical Imperial Age transition. If you get Imperial Age too early, you got no military, it's not going to work out. All right, now let's talk about Imperial Age. I've got a really important tip, especially for early Imperial Age, and that is to fight for the hills. Being on a hill in early Imperial Age and having a castle there, maybe trebbing down an opponent's castle, which is underneath the hill, that can break the game. That can make or break the game. That decides whether you win or whether you lose, who's got the hill in the center of the map. Most of the time, especially on Arabia, there's one king hill in the center of the map. This hill extends to other really big hills on different sides of the maps, but it's, it's all connected to that middle hill. And getting that middle hill, most of the time usually means you have a very easy time to win the other hills and to therefore win the game. Hill advantage is monumental. I've got tons of videos on it. If you have, if you don't know what hill advantage is, just search them on YouTube, uh, type Hera hill advantage or whatever. But for those who know what hill advantage is, you know how strong it is. So in early Imperial Age, especially with the Trebs, we want to make sure we have the hill advantage and it's not our opponent that has it. And a tip to get the hill before Imperial Age is to actually make a lot of army in late Castle Age, go to the hill, make a castle there, and then click Imperial Age. That way, when you get the early imp you already have a castle and that hill and you can play from there it's very important as well that if you don't have the hill then you identify another hill maybe somewhere else that can give you a strategic advantage to maybe counterattack your opponent. Don't try to force your way up a hill if you know you've already lost it and it's going to be a very big disadvantage to fight uphill and try to reclaim it. Fight on other sides of the map and that is a good way to still win the game even if you lose that one really big hill. Strike somewhere else and strike fast. All right, for the last tip, this one's going to be in post Imperial Age, and this is a tip that helps you with the whole game. It's to continue making villagers until you're 200 pop. Never stop making villagers. I don't care what anyone else tells you. They're wrong. Trust me. I know better on this one. I might not know a lot else. Guys, I don't do anything else in my life. I played this game for 10 plus years competitively. I know about it. Trust me. Keep making villas until 200 pop. It's going to change your life. Let me explain what you do with this extra villagers. Think of it this way. You make villas to your 200 pop. So let's say you have 150 or 160. 60 bills and you have 60 military. This isn't a good spread for late game. I'm going to be honest with you. You usually want around like 120 bills to 140. 140 if you have a really expensive army. 120, maybe 110 if you have like a cheaper army like Arbalest Halb. Paladin's more expensive. Arbalest Halb pretty cheap, for example. And so if you get to 150 bills, 160 bills, what do you do with those extra bills? Let me explain it to you. As soon as you get to 200 pop and you've got 160 bills, for example, use those 20 extra bills. Use them to get the forward castles on different hills. Use them to take resources that are very far forward and use them to get walls, stone walls on the sides, very high up walls so that they're really risky. But if you get them down, it's amazing. Use them to get outposts on all places of the map, all corners, forward outposts, get vision. And a lot will die in the process of doing these things. But you don't care if they die because a villager in late game is 50 food, right? It gathers back 50 food like this. It's a snap of the finger and you have 50 food already. It's so quick to gather 50 resources when you have 150 villagers. Like you're getting the resource flow is crazy. So by using some of the extra villas that you have that only cost you like what, 500 food for 10 bills, using them to get outposts on the sides, castles forward, walls everywhere, that is so valuable to you and it's going to be way more important than the 500 food. Also, if you do this, you're not going to be sitting there thinking, okay, I'll stop at 130 bills and then, okay, all of a sudden you got raided, you lost 20 and you're not even close to 200 pop. So now you're lost 20 bills, you're at 110. You have to remake villagers, you lost a lot of time where you could have had 150 bills, all gathering resources and then losing 20 and you'd be fine. You run into a lot of problems. So making bills for 200 
of pop, absolute pro tip, it's gonna completely change the late game. I highly recommend it. And then using the extra fills to go for risky plays on the map and you don't care if you lose them, that is huge. That is absolutely huge. Definitely a really important tip. And I hope you guys can implement it in your game. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care and bye for now.